Joining me this afternoon on our panel of politicians, the Labor MP Kelvin Thompson and the National Senator John Williams. Good afternoon to Good both afternoon. of you. Kelvin, let's start with you. Should we be Good reading Should we be reading too much into the Prime Minister's travel itinerary at the moment? Has she given up now on this national campaign to sell the carbon tax, as Tony Abbott claims? Oh, well, that's a, a ridiculous uh, allegation, Ashley. The, the truth is that the, the Prime Minister is going to be campaigning around this issue and explaining the way in which the carbon price will work uh, for at least the next 12 months uh, until it comes into effect and then after that. And it, uh, she visited my electorate in Brunswick, uh, went to the Plumbing Industry Climate Action Centre and talked to young apprentices there about the, uh, the bright futures that they have in a carbon-constrained economy. And, uh, I've been out to uh, the Glenroy Italian Senior Citizens and the Faulkner Neighbourhood House and out and about explaining the, the carbon price, what its impact on households will be, on pensioners, on jobs and the like. So uh, that's a campaign which will continue for at least the next 12 months. John Williams, we saw a slight increase in support for the carbon tax yesterday in the news poll, up from 30% to 36%. That's after two weeks of being out selling this plan. The government has another two years to try and convince Australians it's right. So we could very well see a turnaround, couldn't we? Well, we've seen, also seen the millions of dollars being spent on advertising, Ashley, uh, through the campaign of advertising. <clears throat> no doubt advertising has some effect, otherwise businesses would not advertise. But uh, I've invited Julie Gillard to New England. Tomorrow I'll have Tony Abbott and Barnaby Joyce in Tamworth. I wish the Prime Minister would come to New England with the uh, joined Tony Windsor there and explain to the people, people up there about it. No doubt the advertising campaign will have some effect, but the people in regional Australia I talk to are furious with this tax, saying it's far too much. It is $400 a head on every man, woman and child in Australia, yet in Europe it's $1 a head. Big difference, Ashley. We have seen Kelvin Thompson today, uh, Tony Blair. He also suggested in that news conference he held with the Prime Minister that she shouldn't be too worried about her dive in popularity. He said tough decisions often do reflect badly on a leader at first. But are some backbenchers starting to worry that it's not the carbon tax, that it could just be that voters don't like Julia Gillard? Her personal popularity levels were still pretty devastating in yesterday's news poll. Uh, I think, Ashley, that the, the latest poll results are encouraging from our point of view and uh, in my own experience talking to people about the carbon price issue, I think, A, that has been the chief driver of our electoral and polling difficulties, but secondly, as people are coming to understand the detail, un coming to understand that this is a $10 a week issue where there is substantial assistance in place via pension rises, via family payments, via tax cuts. Uh, people are coming to understand how the package is intending to work. They understand that there'll be 1.6 million jobs created by 2020, whether or not we have a price on carbon. Uh, I think that there will be a shift in public sentiment in support of the carbon price and in support of Julia Gillard and the government. John Williams, Tony Blair also today argued that Australia needs to keep up. He pointed out that Europe, a number of American states, China is even now looking at putting a price on carbon. So his argument is that the world is moving forward and Australia should be keeping up by, with that through Julia Gillard's plan. Well, actually, I think we're going way ahead of the world. We've got our 20% mandatory in renewable energies target by 2020. That is costing the average household about $200 a year as, as we sit here now. That is a big movement in itself and very expensive and the Productivity Commission has said well it's also a very expensive way to reduce uh, your energy use, your burning of fossil fuels. People around the, the world... the Productivity Commission say that it's the most efficient ways to put a price on carbon? They said on price on carbon. Remember what the Productivity Commission did was compared Australia to our trading partners, not our competition. They didn't compare us against Indonesia or African countries or, or those countries that are actually competing against us in the mining industry. They, they did an inquiry into our trading partners. That's where the, the whole uh, uh, report from, from the Productivity Commission was, was flawed in somewhat. They should have compared to our trading partners. What tax and costs are we going to put onto our competitors around the world, not just those we trade with? That's why I have some serious problems with their recommendations. Well, of course, this is one of the big issues Julia Gillard said when she first became Prime Minister she wanted to deal with. She also said at that point that she wanted to deal with the asylum seeker issue. Yesterday she moved <coughs> forward on the Malaysia deal. We saw it was signed by Chris Bowen over in Malaysia. We are still though seeing a lot of concerns from human rights groups about the welfare of asylum seekers who will be sent from Australia to Malaysia. Here was the Green Senator Sarah Hansen-Young this morning. 
Malaysia won't change their domestic laws. They haven't signed the convention. Uh, it doesn't matter what Julia Gillard or uh, Minister Bowen tell us. Uh, the fact is they cannot guarantee or make any promises about what happens once these people are in Malaysia. Julia Gillard dismissed those concerns today. Well, we've entered an agreement with Malaysia. The agreement was made public yesterday and signed yesterday. It's got protections of human rights for people who are transferred by Australia to Malaysia. And of course, we've entered that agreement on the basis that both governments signing the agreement will honour their obligations under it. Kelvin, the government seems to be very keen to point out that the United Nations is involved in this deal. Yes, it's involved, but it hasn't actually endorsed this deal, has it? Is that going to be good enough for the left faction of the party? Uh, well, I think that uh, what everyone should do uh, is to give this deal a go. The truth is that uh, Australia is uh, known as the land of the fair go, and I think that people should give this deal the opportunity to work. The United Nations High Commission for Refugees and the International Migration Organisation will be involved in the implementation of this deal in looking after people who are uh, sent to Malaysia. So I, I have a, a great deal of confidence in this, and I, I think that uh, it's only fair that people look and see whether this achieves its objective and those objectives are uh, being fair and humane to asylum seekers and refugees but also seeking to break the people smugglers business model and <coughs> put a dent in the number of boats <coughs> coming to Australia. Sarah Hansen Young is right though isn't she when she says that Labor can't guarantee uh, the situation on the ground in, in Malaysia? Uh, we have entered into an agreement with Malaysia which they have signed up to which give an appropriate set of protections to people who are returned to Malaysia under this agreement. So uh, I think it is appropriate for people to see uh, whether these uh, commitments are honoured or not. There is no reason to believe that they will not be honoured, no reason to believe that people who are return to Malaysia will not be allowed to live in the community, uh, have access to work, access to the basic education, basic health facilities that are provided for under the agreement. John Williams, the government argues that at least the UN has been in the room when this deal was, uh, w was agreed on, when it was being drafted, as opposed to the dealings under the Howard government. Well, there's one big difference, Ashley. The dealings under the Howard government with Nauru, we actually solved the problem. We've now had this announcement for almost three months from the government that uh, this deal will go ahead with Malaysia. Since then we've had 11 boats and 565 people arrive. Yet the Prime Minister said that will put an immediate stop to it. It didn't. Now, <clears throat> I think we've got the raw end of the deal here. $292 million of taxpayers' money We've got to pay the freight over, their wellbeing, their education, their health. We've also got to pay for the 4,000 to come to Australia. 800 out of Australia, 4,000 here. That is not a very good deal. And one of my concerns is <clears throat> the 13,750 people we allow to come here each year as, as refugees, 4,000 are going to be coming from Malaysia. So that's going to cut others out. The bulk of those funds, though, are being used to resettle uh, asylum seekers here in Australia, genuine refugees, right? The, the Coalition isn't quibbling over that number of, of bringing in extra extra uh, genuine refugees to Australia, eh? No, no, what we're, what we're saying is, because of that deal now, we will have a lot come from Malaysia. My concern is, and where I live in Inverell in northern New South Wales, we have people from, from Sudan who came here, a lady with her four children, her husband was murdered, her parents were murdered. These are sorts of things we face, people in genuine refugee camps. And I come back to the argument I've put to you for months now, Ashley, these people coming here are paying their way. The more that pay their way to come here, the more we exclude those in genuine refugee camps in many parts of the world. They are totally out of the equation. That is one of the serious problems of this whole program. Well, well, the ink is barely dry on this and already it seems the government is claiming the deal is a success. We spoke with the Defence Minister Stephen Smith from New York this morning. Have a listen. So we think it'll be effective, uh, but as you know we're also in discussions, uh, the Immigration Minister in discussions with Papua New Guinea about other possible arrangements as well. But this is, a, we believe, a most important uh, step and already we've seen uh, since the uh, arrangement was announced back in May a slowing of boat arrivals and, and we believe that is directly linked to the adverse publicity that, uh, that the people smugglers have got as a consequence of this arrangement.
Calvin Thompson, is a bit too early to claim success for this deal. Some argue that the tragic Christmas Island disaster last year has been much more of a deterrent than this Malaysia deal being signed. Plus, as John Williams pointed out, we've still had 11 boats since the deal was announced. Uh, that's 567 people who have been willing to risk a return to Malaysia of that, that period since this deal was first flagged. Right. Ashley, I, I do have to correct something that John said earlier in suggesting that uh, the increase in the number of refugees of 4,000 would be at the expense of our annual quota of 13,750. In fact, what has occurred is that those refugees will be additional to the 13,750 and will be taken at the rate of 1,000 extra each year for the next four years. So the quota has been lifted from 13,750 to 14,750 so it represents an increase in our refugee intake and is a sign of Australia's humanitarian commitment. As to whether these measures will be effective or not, the, the point is that I believe they should be given the opportunity to work and that people should not rush to judgment. I, I suspect that there are people out there who are wanting these things to fail and I think that's unfortunate. I, uh, there seem to me to be some people who want the boats to keep coming or who want to see human rights abuses in Malaysia. I believe it is very much in Australia's interests and in the interests of the refugees and asylum seekers themselves that these measures are successful and that we see the establishment of more orderly processes, the queue that people talk about. This is the kind of thing we need to see be successful. John Williams, if this does work, if boat numbers do continue to drop significantly as a result of this deal, is there any way the Coalition would leave it in place if you do win the next election? Well, the Coalition have said quite clearly for months or for longer than months now, actually, since this whole industry kicked up again of trafficking in people, that we would open Nauru. We had, we had this, so I've you, said you before. Get rid of the Malaysia deal. Well, we think it's a very bad deal. We think it's bad financially. We Even think if it's it a ruin. Works, still can it? Well, time will tell to see if it works, but obviously that'll be the discussions we'll have. But we've got a government in Nauru ready to solve the problem like they did before back in 2001. The arrogance of this government simply not going there is simply amazing. This is the most arrogant thing I've seen in my three years in the parliament. OK. We do need to get to a break. John Williams, Kelvin Thompson, stay with us. After the break, we'll be looking at a couple of issues, including the debt debate in the US. Stay with us.